Today, we have a really special program because we're going to highlight some great people associated with the museum, our volunteers. I've noted and said for years that no museum can function in the community without its volunteer corps. And that's certainly true for us at the State Museum. These folks perform and assist with a variety of functions at the museum. You may see them um, in the exhibit uh, offering information about collections and special exhibitions, but there are even more working behind the scenes, working with our curators and collections managers to help care for the Commonwealth's treasures. We're going to meet two of our very special volunteers today, but first I'd like to introduce Amy Jukas, our volunteer coordinator who's been shepherding our volunteer corps for a decade now. And uh, we'd like her to tell us about the program and how to join us in this capacity. Hi, Amy, thanks for coming on today. Good afternoon, Beth, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you yeah. again for having me on today. Great, well, I'm glad, glad you're with us. Um, and you have been with us at the museum for 10 years. It's hard to believe it's been that long already. And recently I was really touched by a Facebook posting that you had made personally um, about your tenure for those 10 years. And you, in that posting, you used a number of photographs to highlight the great variety of things that have gone on with volunteers at the museum over that decade. Um, you made a PowerPoint for us today based on that posting. And I think it'd be a great way to demonstrate all of the opportunities and offerings and potential ways to volunteer. So let's, let's take a look. I see we have it up here. I'll let you tell us what's going on in these slides and, and I'll, I might have a couple of questions. So yes, Beth, we have a ton of exciting opportunities that we offer for volunteers here at the State Museum. Um, so our, uh, one of our popular uh, programs that we run is our Stop and Learn program. And that program is a educational program where we have interactive carts that are placed in the galleries that pertain to the topic of the gallery. And we do run a training for volunteers and um, we have a couple topics available to them. They choose the topic, we bring them in to train them with the cart and content, and they are stationed in the gallery um, popular for the school group season. So they do interact with our teachers and students as they travel through the galleries. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a, a, a long list of uh, public events. Um, one of our popular events is Great Pumpkin Day. Um, that is scheduled for Saturday, October 16th, 2021, this, this fall. Right. You and see they really get into the spirit Yeah, it's of a that. seasonal event. <laughs> And then we also, so for Great Pumpkin, it's a seasonal fall event. And then we also have New Year's Eve, which is a um, celebration that we have at the museum where we do arts, crafts, games, activities, and we drop our famous firefly down at 12 noon in Memorial Hall. So we need a lot of volunteers and it's a very popular event and it's a very enjoyable one. Um, our volunteers you know, have a great time. It's fun for all ages. And uh, th this event, what we use like, 20 volunteers for this we, we really need a lot of people to help out with it because it's so big because we get crowds of 300 to 500 people and and there are like hundreds of balloons casking that cascading down with that firefly so it is fun for everybody i think it's it very great popular we also have a huge statewide um show called the Pennsylvania Farm Show. And it's exhibited at the Farm Show Complex. And the State Museum is one of the participants where we have an exhibit that is showcased in the McClay Street um, lobby. And um, we feature um, archeology, span um, Pennsylvania topics that are chosen each year. And we, um, we do rely to um, recruit a lot of volunteers because we have them stationed at the exhibit to greet guests, hand out information, brochures. And it is a really enjoyable experience because you talk to every visitor across the state. And you also get a chance to meet with other um, local um, participants that are exhibiting as well there at the farm show. Mm -hmm. It's a fun way to also experience the farm show. Yeah, great. We have um, in March, we celebrate Charter Day 
and we, the state archives and the state museum work together and they bring out the William Penn Charter and they put it out in display for one week. So we recruit our volunteers to be stationed at the charter to not only keep an eye on the exhibit, but to um, interact with guests as they come through the gallery. Um, our volunteers, it's similar to Stop and Learn. So we train our volunteers, we'll give them um, some talking points, but it's another enjoyable experience. Um, and Charter Day is a quite popular event. We get a lot of um, visitors that come out. So we have volunteers that are placed at the Charter each day when it's out on a display. And then we also celebrate Charter Day um, on in Sunday in March, traditionally. Right. Another, that's another huge event. We get a thousand people coming in to see the charter and uh, it's another great day at the museum. And then we also have homeschool day. We have this, um, this is a popular program for our homeschool families. We welcome, welcome the students and parents to come in to um, explore the museum galleries. And we have our curators that are, out, out, that are out on the galleries giving tours. And we utilize volunteers to be stationed at um, numerous uh, uh, tables. We have arts and crafts, we have refreshments. Um, we'll use volunteers to be an assistant if we're doing presentations in Nature Lab or in any particular gallery. It's a, it's a very enjoyable um, event mm -hmm. and the students appreciate it. We also have Art of the State and it's our juried statewide art exhibition. It's traditionally held in the summer, but due to uh, the pandemic, we switched it to the fall. So that will be opening in September. And we do have an Art of the State art docent program where we have docents that will come in and give tours in the galleries and just be a presence in that exhibit and to answer any questions that the visitors may have in relation to any of the artworks on display. And then with Art of the State and also with our Pennsylvania South Central Scholastic Arts exhibit, we have our docents that they meet together and they select an Art Docents Choice Award. So um, the docents will come into the gallery, work together, and they will pick a piece of, uh, of artwork in Art of the State and in the Scholastic Arts exhibit. And we um, give a award out to the artist that is chosen. And we should mention that Scholastic Arts, those are student artists. Yes. And so it's also <clears throat> a lot of fun for the docents to come in. And, and that particular photograph is with one of our student art, amazing student artists, uh, middle school and high school artists. Um, and that, that's been a, a fun thing that the, the docents have really embraced the past few years is to get to pick a piece. We also have um, after hours programs. Um, the State Museum does participate in Harrisburg's monthly Third in the Berg celebration. So we'll highlight a topic in the gallery or an exhibit and we'll do an after hours tour program um, with a little uh, a reception with refreshments that are offered. And um, we have uh, the great summer switch that we do in the summer. And we work with partner up with the Susquehanna Art Museum and we will have their curators come over to give a perspective about our pieces that are exhibited in Art of the State. And then after we wrap up that half hour program, we will travel down to the Susquehanna Art Museum where the museum will work together with the Susquehanna Art Museum to do a tour in their exhibition, talk about their pieces that are on display. This, I, I just wanted to mention also, we don't have a date for it yet, but because Art of the State's in the fall, we'll have that, the summer switch will turn into a fall switch. <laughs> and uh, we'll do that in the fall. And that, that was Alice Ann Schwab in that picture, who's the director of Sussman Art Museum. It's kind of cool because uh, we have a couple of our docents who, do, who do that also at the Sussman Art Museum. So we love to, uh, share ideas and, and people with the Susquehanna Art Museum whenever possible too. It's a great resource. And we also have volunteers in our collections here at the State Museum. So um, we have a photo of two volunteers helping in the archaeology lab, Clydeen Strauss and Mary Kay Wood. And then we had a past volunteer, former volunteer. She has moved on to further her studies for her career in uh, Pennsylvania Wildlife, that is Alex Pachowski, and she was a volunteer that helped in the section of zoology and botany 
here at the State Museum. So we do offer volunteer opportunities for applicants that would like to assist in our collections. We also recognize our volunteers. We do seasonal recognitions. Um, here's a photo of the holiday coffee social that we'll have in Village Square. We usually have that in the beginning of December. Just get, get together with all of our volunteers and enjoy um, a, a morning with coffee and refreshments. And um, this is a photo of our PHMC Volunteer of the Year recognition. This is an agency-wide celebration. So uh, the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission will recognize volunteers not only at the State Museum, but at our sites as well. So we host this in traditionally in April on a Saturday, when we'll start off um, on the ground floor, we'll do refreshments, and then there will be a program in the auditorium we will recognize and honor our volunteers during the program. And then we will have a lunch following the program. And then there's another photo of um, Clydeen. She was one of our volunteers of the year. So we do, we have a lot of exciting opportunities for anybody that is interested in volunteering. Well, thank you for that uh, overview, because I think that really does show the, the vibrant life of the museum, and that is when people meet people in a museum setting. There's nothing like it. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. So, Amy, how does one take advantage of that opportunity? Just give us some ideas about how to become a state museum volunteer. Of course. So there's just three steps um, for volunteers, uh, any applicant that's interested in the program. We have a uh, volunteer profile. It's an application that they will fill out. Then following the application, we will schedule an in-person screening to get to know the applicant. And then following that, we will um, have the applicant complete background checks. And rest assured, the State Museum does cover the costs of the background checks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's Great. pretty simple, um, smooth, and um, we're always helpful to answer any questions that applicants need. Excellent. And we'll be showing uh, an email that you can uh, uh, reach out to to inquire about the program um, at the end of our show today. So uh, we'll get to that. I also want to mention that, and I have to put a large caveat of, around this, but People often ask me how to get into museum work, and this is true, not just for us, but across the board. They'll say, how do I become, you know, work in museums? I will often uh, advise people to become a volunteer. That is in no way, uh, that's my caveat, it is not um, a pure path to becoming an employee at all. But if you want to learn about museums and show your interest, being a volunteer is a great way to find out what goes on in a museum behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, meet um, museum professionals, and just kind of get a feel for uh, the field uh, overall. And then it also gives you some great experience. So we've had, you know, a few interns I know have become uh, employees over the years. But again, that's, those are special situations. And again, this isn't a guarantee of employment, but I just, uh, if you really want to know about a museum or just enjoy working in a museum, enjoy um, learning, uh, it's a great place to, uh, great way to get into it is through the volunteer program. You That's say, how I got in. I started oh. off as a volunteer. This is Sherry popping in with a voice here. But yeah, I started off as a volunteer um, for years, worked here at the State Museum and in Fort Hunter, work at a variety of different opportunities. So mm -hmm. that was then... Great. There you go. There's a testimony right there. <laughs> um, so let's meet two of our volunteers right now so that they can tell you a bit about how they got involved and uh, some of their favorite things to do. We have with us today Pauline Wagner. I see she's just popped up there. And Clydeen Strauss, um, longtime volunteers with the State Museum. Um, both of these ladies have been awarded the State Museum Volunteer of the Year, and we're also PHMC's, that's our pa parent agency, Historical Museum Commission, 
Volunteer Outstanding Service Awards, which is a statewide honor. So these are very decorated people we have with us today, but they represent a, a, a nice core of, of a great family of volunteers at the State Museum and, and reflective of our whole commission. Um, I just again, Pauline Wagner has been a volunteer. She's our longest serving volunteer and she has been a volunteer since 1986, um, which is fantastic. She is, she lives in Mechanicsburg. Um, she has, um, is a docent and events volunteer. There may be other capacities I'm not aware of. And Clydeen has served as a curatorial volunteer with our archaeology section. So she's been behind the scenes with collections since 1998. But she also, I think it's very interesting about her, she also uh, has served as a volunteer even longer for the Ephrata Cloister, which is one of our historic sites in the field in Ephrata in Lancaster County. And she lives in Middletown in Dauphin County. So welcome you all to our uh, program. Um, I just want to ask first of, of each of you, how did you uh, become a volunteer at the museum, State Museum? Well, my personal history with the State Museum began as a teenager when I and my friends would walk from uptown Harrisburg and go to the main capital complex and visit a place called the Mammal Room, which really was the forerunner of Mammal Hall. And we were awed by what we thought were stuffed animals because we didn't know what taxidermy was. And then at, when I became a mother, I would take my daughters to the museum on a monthly basis and we would go to Mammal Hall and the Hall of Geology and the chair, chest and table exhibit on the first floor. And it was so enriching for them and myself. And so in midlife, I had some time on my hands and I decided I wanted to enrich myself and also serve the, the community in a meaningful way. So it was a no brainer to call the State Museum. And luckily when I called the education department, I was offered to come in for an interview and I was accepted. And I've been with the museum as a volunteer every year since then. And I've enjoyed it very much. It's enriched my life and it's giving, given me a, a purpose, you know, to serve the community and expands, you know, your social networks too, by being a volunteer. Well, that, that's fabulous. And so you, let me just go back because I hadn't heard this part of the story before you grew up in Harrisburg in the Harrisburg area and came to the museum when it was in the Ryan building next to the Capitol? Is that correct? If that's where, if that's where the mammal room was, yes, we would walk from North Fifth Street, uptown Harrisburg. Okay. It was, it was safe to do that then. <laughs> Just a bunch of us and visit yeah. the animals. Still safe to walk around a lot of Harrisburg. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, but you used to go to, to see it. And, you know, it's interesting because some of those animals were carried it whether well, they were all mm -hmm. kept in our collections but ended up in mammal hall mammal which hall. was the first designed exhibit actually um planned by the architects to have those windows in our popular mammal hall. so you've seen the whole gamut yes of it. it dates me though really? because there was no state museum when i was a teenager so well there was uh it was that museum over there was mm -hmm. no the big round mid-century modern building had not been built yet. Not so, what we have today. Then you brought your daughters to the big build, to the mm -hmm. round building. That's really interesting. I love to hear history, personal histories of people with their state museum. Clydeen, tell us about your um, introduction to the state museum and to your volunteering with PHMC. Well, I, again, also, I was coming to the museum before, um, I got into volunteering, uh, but ours started with a friend of ours um, inviting us to sing with the Effort of Cloister Chorus. They were getting ready to do a concert tour in Germany, and with music being one of the first loves in our family, um, it was a no-brainer. Um, we worked it out, and we were headed to Germany with the Effort of Cloister Chorus. Uh, and that was in the spring of 1998. And we went over there in June. 
uh, then followed with uh, getting a letter from the Friends of the State Museum, museum um, invite, looking for volunteers for archaeology because um, Steve Warfel, the curator of archaeology, then was doing field school down at the Effort of Cloister. And for my love of history, um, it put two and two together, uh, the music of the cloister and doing uh, working down at the dig, uh, processing the artifacts, helping with that. Um, so that was the beginning, uh, working with Steve uh, and Janet Johnson. Mm -hmm. yeah. Steve was our curator then. Uh, yes. Sadly, we lost Steve last year. He re retired uh, about 15 years ago. But yes, he did those uh, digs at Effort of Cloister looking mm -hmm. for Revolutionary War era um, sites and materials. And I, until just chatting with you the other day, I did not realize that connection um, from, it makes perfect sense that that would bring you to the State Museum. So that, right. that's really cool as well. I'm going to start, go ahead. And, and the original buildings down at the cloister that are no longer there, uh, doing digs to find those um, with, um, and having, yeah, you know, it just all, it all brought it together. <laughs> that's, that's really exciting. Um, now I'll step back and ask another question. Do you all have a favorite experience at the State Museum? Something that you think of that really stands out in your memory? You have many years to go through to think about that, but is there anything that um, for either you, of you, Pauline or uh, Clydeine, that is a favorite experience or something that speaks to why you continue to do this? Well, my favorite experience was doing a stop and learn program called Victorian Life, and I had a group of special ed children, maybe aged, you know, four to eight, and they were seated on the floor all around me, and I was on a very short stool, and they were allowed to touch all these artifacts. Some of them were reproductions, but some of them were real from a one-trick pony. They could put the coin in the pony's mouth and hope it went into the little coin slot. They could touch a Victorian fan and fan themselves. And after my presentation was over, I thanked the children for being such good listeners. And one little boy just rose up and came over and kissed me on the forehead. Mm -hmm. and, and that's my magical moment. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, tremendous. And, you know, because you're on the floor and meeting people directly, you really see that light bulb go off mm -hmm. for kids and for adults. So that's what we're going for. We're, we're looking right. for that moment of connection and where they start to think about something outside their usual world and connect with the past and find the relevancy. That's what you all help them to do. And that's yeah, very- That moment has not been topped yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I just want to throw in also when we're, you guys do have several hands-on materials with those cards and, and in other programs too, mm -hmm. and then Nature Lab, all of those items aren't items necessarily in our collections. They're things that have been uh, deemed that are useful, are used in educational programs. So we're not touching uh, stuff that is uh, <laughs> deemed treasures, yeah. but, but there are those opportunities to get close to items and get some more uh, information about them. Clydeen. Do you have a moment that you have yeah. uh, favorite moment? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I mean, between the cloister and with the museum, um, our, of course, the concert tour, we did two. Uh, but the very first one, we were in Aberbach. And what was exciting um, was being um, guest of a uh, Weissel family who owns the bakery in Aberbach descendants mm. of Conrad Weissel. It was, uh, the founder. it was the founder of the Right. Effort. And they were baker, bread bakers in Germany. And uh, the descendant, they're still um, still baking bread in Aberbach, Germany. And we were treated to a wonderful, wonderful lunch and his baked goods and, of course, pretzels. Pretzels, um, <laughs> a bakery in Germany. You'll find, if you see the pretzel hanging outside, uh, that's the bakeries in Germany. Hmm. And um, with the 
with the museum. Um, it would be the digs down at Ephrata, um, of course, tying the two together. Um, and I, the dig up at Fort Hunter, uh, interesting things at Ephrata, wonderful things coming out of Fort Hunter. Uh, the well, my daughter and I just talked about this the other day when we were digging the well, um, items we were getting from there. And of course they had exciting things uh, like the cannonball that was found. Uh, but yes, um, and the, yeah, and just the wonderful um, teamwork, uh, the wonderful for, you know, uh, experiences with, uh, like I say, Steve Warfel and Janet and now Kurt Carr. Right. And yeah. I, and you're, you know, you're intersecting there with a team that is very dedicated to going out and meeting folks and talking about what we do and what, uh -huh. what is history and what is archaeology and they right. do a great, great deal of art outreach. So right. thank you for helping with that. Um, do, have you worked with collections in the laboratory too? Or you've mainly been doing things outside? On no, the I, I weekly, um, my day week, weekly is to work in the lab. I uh, started out with cleaning artifacts, um, labeling. Labeling has become Mary Kay and my job. <laughs> uh, before Mary COVID. Kay, another volunteer. Yes, and before volunteer. COVID. Um, but um, yeah, I, I do. I work in the lab. Um, and anything else that they need uh, to be done. There's also the archaeology workshop in the fall. Uh, and my, and as a matter of fact, my family's involved with the volunteering also. Our, my, our daughter and my husband, um, yeah, they're involved also with the different things that we do. That's, um, that's tremendous. Um, and, and with the chorus, it's, that's interpreting the history because mm -hmm. it's music that Conrad Beisel wrote and other members of the cloister. So it's an interpretation and of the history. And that really brings that site to life. Um, I know uh, I've, I've heard of, unfortunately, I've not experienced, but I've heard wonderful things about a Christmas time concert that you do at Effort. Are you all still doing that, the candlelight? Uh, well, the concerts? Christmas at the cloister. Uh, is done. Uh, they did it virtually this past right. December. And then the week between Christmas and New Year's, uh, the educate the curator of education, Michael Showalter, does a can Christmas candlelight tour. And that's the student historians act out an event that is written in the in the books uh, at the cloister. Wow. So yeah, and you go into the different buildings. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's great. What keeps um, both of you coming back to the museum to volunteer? I, I think docents, volunteers, I think that we are lifelong learners. And this is a perfect venue for us, you know, to spend um, our, the years of our lives when many of us are retired. And we have, and we're now grandparents. Uh, so this is a wonderful way uh, to enrich ourselves and again, contribute to the community. And the museum is such a perfect blend. It's not just history, it's art, it's culture, it's Indians, it's, it's geology. There's so many things going on at the museum, so many events. And uh, we always mourn when a new, you know, when a, a program is ended, we always mourn that, but then we get a new exciting program. Something, something new to learn. And we know that now. Mm -hmm. And I know that during, during the pandemic when the museum has been closed, I really missed the Charter Day mm -hmm. and Art of the State, even though it was virtual, it wasn't the same to meet and greet the artists. And I also mourned the fact that the uh, Violet Oakley exhibit had to be terminated, you know, and so many people did not get a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that again, was that was tough. Yeah, we, we, we feel very appreciated too by, uh, by the staff and we mm -hmm. feel valued and we feel welcome there and we are a team and we work wherever we're needed and we do it gladly. Thank you. And we, the feeling is mutual. It is, it is quite a, a family. And 
and we like, you know, you guys are our colleagues and uh, we really appreciate the, the sincerity that you bring to the whole process and that idea of the lifelong learning. I mean, that's what you're sharing with others and you're learning at the same time. It's, uh, it's a great, great program. Clydeen, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, I agree with Pauline 100% with what she's saying. Uh, and again, the staff with archaeology, um, the family that we've gotten to um, have at the cloister, um, everyone's wonderful to work with. Um, and as they say, when you go to a job, you want to go because you want to go and you want to really enjoy it. That's mm -hmm. what going to both. That's, um, yeah, they're wonderful to work for. So you don't mind at all giving of yourself well we're looking we as during the pandemic and even now we have not um been able to have you guys in mm -hmm. behind the scenes uh and on the floor um we're hoping that after labor day um that we'll get back to i'm using air quotes normal and be able to bring um volunteers back uh we'll have our interns back next they're not volunteers but interns back next summer and uh look to start having researchers come back in in the fall as well we'll just keep again everyone needs to keep paying attention to uh our website and social media and we'll be in touch with volunteers as to as to when um, we can uh, resume um uh, let's Let's go to see what kind of questions we have from our audience. Um, let me look here. Uh, first of all, I saw a question about where the Susquehanna Art Museum is and um, or how far away it is. It's just, um, it's, it's less than half a mile from the museum. It's just about three blocks. And that's why that, um, uh, summer switch or fall switch program, third in the bird program, where it's kind of like a progressive tour as Amy was describing from one place to another, why that works, because it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to walk up there from the museum. So we have a lot of fun doing that. Um, let's see, another question asking what the background check covers and I'll just say it's just simply um, there's a, a state and FBI background check and there's the child endangerment check as well, just so that, you know, we have our, our many of our volunteers work directly with children. There's always, almost always a, 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 another adult present, but we'd like to have those background checks too, which is common in nonprofit organizations. Um, I have a question for, um, our volunteers here. I, I said, what favorite experience? What's your favorite exhibit in the State Museum? I'd have to say Mammal Hall. I feel I can sit there and be in total comfort and relaxation, meditation uh, with the bison. The, the, you know, that's, what? The bison. That's, just takes it's I'm in all of that of that <laughs> does that seem it's it's got all that snow in it does it make you cold sitting there <laughs> no no I guess it's the blues and it's a calm it's a calming yeah, well, that's, no. yeah. if you look on Instagram or Flickr sometimes on Facebook people have visited the museum that's usually the picture that they put up it is universally a favorite and uh Anyone who's seen it would probably agree. It's really a terrific scene. And uh, Pauline, was there, was that? This is a, I should know the answer to this question. I, I cannot okay. remember. Was it in, was it in yeah. the old? It was called a mammal room. And I can't remember if the bison was there. You know, it was so big. It's so big. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time imagining it would have fit in that building the way it's configured. and. Um, I'll have to look up in records to see how long we've had that. But. Oh, that would be interesting to find yeah. out. <laughs> so, Pauline, what's your favorite exhibit at the museum? Well, I think my favorite exhibit is uh, Objects of Valor and doing the Stop and Learn Civil War card. 
-hmm. And I, I seem to like the second floor. I like, I really enjoy the Conestoga wagon, probably because I get a lot of traffic through there and I can grab, grab the school kids really well in that area. And then mm -hmm. I also like coal mining. So I really like the second floor. <laughs> The indus industry, technology, transportation. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're talking about the Conestoga wagon, there's a beautiful painting in the background, which also which shows the, the kids, the actual mm -hmm. wagon going over a bridge, you know, in colonial days. So it's a great tie-in to see the real wagon and then see how it was utilized mm -hmm. many, many years ago. And, and to kind of... Uh, get uh, away from the notion you know, a lot of people see the kind of silver wagon they're like little house on the prairie you know but mm -hmm, it's a mm -hmm. great it's a great uh vehicle and uh was just you know was so important in pennsylvania the with the roads and how it was constructed to match that um so that that's a really cool thing uh, objects of valor the civil war exhibit um, and the big Rothermel painting. Now you probably remember seeing that in the old museum. Oh, yeah. That was the big feature over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, wow, that's really neat. Can you see if there are any other questions? Um, someone asked, what was the Violet Oakley exhibit? And I'll just mention, um, we had, uh, this is related to the Capitol. Uh, Violet Oakley was a tremendous um, artist a hundred years ago, well, more than a hundred years ago, and she painted many of the murals in the state um, capitol building. And we have about 300 of her original sketches for her work over the capitol. She was in the governor's uh, reception, office, reception room the uh, Senate and also the uh, Supreme Court chamber and they're just gorgeous works of art. We had a major exhibit that highlighted, uh, showcased these sketches with very large murals of the actual uh, photo murals of the murals over the Capitol and told the story of, of her doing that and even had her voice um, from a recording found at the state archives as part of the exhibit. So yeah, that was a very beautiful, exhibit and was uh, was cut short by the pandemic. So thus uh, wondering what it was like. Um, so uh, I think that is all of our questions. Amy, do you have any questions or anything you'd like to add about uh, the, volu the work of these two people in particular or our volunteers in general? I just um, enjoy being in the galleries and interacting with our volunteers. Again, we are a team, we're a family. Um, my goal is to make each new applicant to be comfortable and just to enjoy their experience as best as they can here at the State Museum and make them feel welcome. I enjoy um, our volunteers networking with our new volunteers and our past volunteers. I would say a favorite memory um, our tradition is the PHMC volunteer recognition because not only do I interact with the volunteers at the museum, but I have that special opportunity to meet with all the other volunteers across the state agency wide with the PHMC. So um, it's been a privilege and um, it's been very enjoyable. Great. Yeah, I'm going to pop in from the educator's perspective. Um, there's only three educators um, on staff in a very large building, and it's really difficult to try, and especially when all the school kids in and our big programs, to try and you know get to out to those people and share our information about the museum. So we really rely on our volunteers uh, to work with us. We do work as a partnership, um, just to let anybody know. We, we never really want to throw anybody out into the galleries without preparing you. So let us. Just don't be worried we prepare you along the way yes and that is so true that the volunteers are extensions of the work that you all do and uh, we need more uh, we uh, we appreciate the team that we have but we are open for more volunteers and we hope that uh, maybe through this program you know, people may hear and get interested or share with others the opportunity and this is recorded and we'll be having this on uh, uh, YouTube, so uh, share it with others um, so that people can find out 
how they can volunteer. So at this time, we have our uh, slide up to inquire about volunteering at the State Museum. There you see the email address that goes into a general account and Amy will follow up with you and uh, give you a call and, and, and get you in. That's in the chat box too. So if you wanna grab that and I'll also email it to anybody registered. Well, I want our time is come to an end. I wanna thank uh, Pauline, Clydine and Amy for joining us. Thank you for your great service and all your wonderful words about the museum. We really treasure these relationships and treasure, treasure your service. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and I you. look forward to seeing you in person soon. <laughs> Likewise. And thank yes. you to all those who gather us and have special events just to recognize and, and show appreciation to all the volunteers. A huge thank you to all those involved at the museum. Well, on their behalf, I will say you're welcome. And uh, we, we uh, again, we look forward to seeing you in person. Well, next up on uh, State Museum Perspectives, uh, next month, August 27th, end of summer, basically, um, we're going to have a great program also with um, WITF's Tim Lambert. Um, Tim Lambert is a morning host on uh, WITF Radio uh, FM, and um, he is also the news director at WITF. He um, uh, is, has a very uh, interesting, strong connection to the Flight 93 crash in Western Pennsylvania. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, which seems hard to believe. But Tim's family actually owned some of the property uh, out there where the crash occurred. And um, he has taken a very natural and keen interest in preserving the stories um, of Flight 93 and uh, that whole episode and sharing it with over the years and he's had some really award-winning coverage in the past 20 years. Um, we have an upcoming exhibit at the museum called Witness to History. Tim had a great role with this exhibit in that he did an interview with a gentleman who had um, uh, donated his field notes from the state archives to from, from the Pennsylvania State Police to the Pennsylvania State Archives, our sister agency will be displaying those. Tim did an interview with this gentleman, Polly Vanco, and we'll be featuring that. We'll be talking to Tim next month about his uh, experience okay, with uh, Flight 93, uh, that history, and also about our upcoming exhibit. Next week, uh, July 30th, um, uh, this will be a um, uh, curator. Well, it's it's called uh, it's advent. It's uh, help me treasures. out with that. Treasures, treasures from the vault. Thank you. I just kept coming with curator's choice. Treasures from the vault. It's a it's a fascinating uh, recent acquisition of ours. Um, a parachute wedding dress from World War II. Um, I'm not going to say any more about that, but tune in for that and you get to see this dress and learn about the special history around it. August 6th, um, Artist Conversations, Lauren Litwa, Tekla's Ladder is the piece that we'll be looking at that is hers in the um, uh, permanent collection. Pennsylvania Turtles featured on August 13th with Adventures in Nature Lab. And I just mentioned uh, Paula Vanko's field notes for 9-11. Um, there will also be a curator's choice with um, Rich Saylor, the archivist, um, who has worked on the exhibit with us. He'll be talking with us on uh, August 20th and with Brad Smith, our program director. And then, of course, as I mentioned, the WITF, um, uh, WITF's Tim Lambert um, with me on State Museum Perspectives, August 27th. I should also mention that um, it's slated, you'll hear more about this on WITF, but uh, it's planned that Smart Talk, the, the uh, public radio program, the daily talk show on WITF is coming to the State Museum to help us open that exhibit on Thursday morning, July 9th. It's gonna be a public event. It's gonna be their first public event um, since uh, the pandemic. 
WITF will have that information about how to sign up for that because we will take be taking some people as a live audience event in the State Museum Auditorium that morning. Mm. You have to sign up for it and uh, WITF will have that information. So that's all from me today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks again to our volunteers and to Amy Jukas. And Sherry, do you have some closing notes? No, I think this was great. Um, once again, I love visiting with you guys every Friday, even virtually. Pauline and Clydeen are two of our regulars that attend our uh, Learn at Lunchtime programs virtually. So that's another connection that we, you know, we've been able to connect with our volunteers even through Zoom. Yes, exactly. Yes, we've kept in touch that way. Thanks, Sherry. Have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you guys all soon.